Just on the pandemic. Thanks for joining us again, Peter. I want to first up get, get, get your analysis of the Indian or Delta strain. We know it's more transmissible than other variants. Is it more dangerous? Is it more deadly? Well, the available evidence is it's not more deadly. Um, if you actually look at the figures from um, UK, it's got a lower mortality rate, but there's a bit of bias in that and that the younger people are relatively getting it more often because they're less immunised and that always will be the biggest influence on your mortality rate. So I think it's about the same. And it actually is more infectious, but we also need to keep it in perspective. Every time we've had a new strain, whether it's the UK strain, Brazilian strain, Alpha, Kappa or whatever, there's always been this worry, oh, this is, you know, going to spread so much further. And the reality is we've been able to control all these strains each time because it spreads the same way. So the basics we've done, combined with cooperative public, lots of um, testing and very good contact tracing, we've been able to contain this. And I would actually think that's likely in New South Wales again. Um, you know, they've had very good contact tracing, very good testing, and the vast majority of people are all known links. There's not a lot of mystery cases there because that's, you know, the real worry because for every one of them, there's another one you haven't found yet. So, look, I'd be at the moment optimistic that this is all going to come under control in the next week or so um, in New South Wales. But the strain itself, um, in a large series from the UK, um, from England, they looked at 15,000 people with the Delta strain and saw how many of their household contacts ended up getting infected. And it was 12.4%. And that was with 30,000 contacts followed up. So this isn't like 100% infectivity or even 50%. Yes, it's more than some of the other strains, but it's, you know, still controllable. And close contacts, well, if you're with somebody you know, for more than um, 10 minutes or 15 minutes and within two metres, it's probably about 8%. But again, it's not 100%. And if we look at what's happened in Melbourne, there was a Delta strain there that was controlled. Um, the Delta strain that was um, involved about a month or so ago in, in Sydney, again, that was controlled, the one that came via the US and via um, one person in the eastern suburbs. So this is not the end of the world. I think it's controllable. Um, yes, it is more infectious, but it spreads the same way and we know what we can do to decrease the risk of spread. I just ought to expand on that because um, it's very important because some government ministers and health officials and premiers have been talking about this virus being more deadly, more dangerous than other variants. Now, I've seen some of the data from the UK you reference. It has uh, the Delta variant at a much lower case fatality rate, much lower than other variants. But you're saying that's because of who's being infected and you're very clear that it's about the same. We're looking about the same sort of mortality rates overall. Well, there may be an argument that it's less virulent, but I think there's so many confounders in there. I'd say it's about the same. In one study, more people went into hospital, but in fact, it had a lower mortality. So I think for the moment, there's no evidence that it's more deadly and kills you more often. It does spread a bit more, but so did the previous UK or Alpha variant as well. But it still spreads the same way. And one of the reasons often is people are infectious for five days instead of four or with this particular strain, what it binds to in our nose and our eyes and other body places that are ACE2 receptors. And maybe it binds a little bit uh, firmer, so it makes it easier for, to get a foothold and, and multiply. But again, this virus is behaving and spreading the same way. It just does it with a bit more opportunism. But it's not as if it's not controllable. If we do South Wales at the moment, um, at the moment, it looks like they will put a lid on it and probably control it over the next four or five days uh, with what was put in place about a week ago. Well, uh, Peter, you're right. You've been right. You've been right on these uh, sort of predictions uh, every time over every outbreak in the in the past. So we listen intently to what you say. Uh, is it the case? It's very clear now, in fact, isn't it, that we've got the whole country running an elimination strategy, including New South Wales. Is that achievable or practical? Well, I don't think it's sustainable because we're surrounded by um, the virus and it keeps on getting it reintroduced. Look at Australia now. So this belief that, hey, we can keep it eliminated and we can go back to normal, I don't think is realistic. I think what is realistic is we'll be in a much better position in three or four months' time. Currently, we're vaccinating about a million people a week because we now finally have enough AstraZeneca vaccine to vaccinate those most at risk, which are people particularly over 70, but over 60. There is about two or 300,000 doses of the Pfizer vaccine coming in per week and is available. 
And that's because the US has really stopped any exports of their vaccines till about a month ago. In two months time, we'll have a lot more of a number of vaccines from the US and we should be able to do 2 million people a week in a couple of months time. What that means is we've given 7 million doses already of vaccine. To get about 70, 80% of adults vaccinated in Australia, which I think is what we need to do, that's about 30 million doses. That's achievable before the end of this year. And if we can get more supplies, which is the current problem rather than hesitancy, it's actually a lack of supply, then once we get 2 million doses a week being delivered, and remember, we give a million doses of the flu vaccine every year per week, you know, in three months before the flu season. I don't think this is, you know, a, a non-achievable thing. And that actually means by October, November, we will have a large proportion of adults vaccinated and most of those actually with, you know, two shots. So, and it also then will be um, late spring, um, summer when the virus spreads less often. It's not a surprise that we're getting clusters now. It's winter. And I think people have been more complacent because they think we've eliminated that. We need to, I think, believe we can suppress this to really low levels. Yes, we have eliminated every virus that's been introduced, but if we have the view in our mind, it's always there, could be there, might take a week to recognise, we need to have some limitations on what we do, um, but not, you know, lockdowns completely all the time, uh, particularly with very few cases, because we've been very successful at controlling that so far without locking down. And when we've done short lockdowns, I'm not convinced it's made any difference. All the per cases that were found were found by good contact tracing anyway. So New South Wales at the moment is a little bit different because there's 30, 40 cases a day potentially, and that can overwhelm you. But so far, um, you know, they've all been found. There have been known contacts. They've been in isolation. So I would still be reasonably confident we'll be able to get this down to low numbers, eliminate it again for short periods of time. But I also feel it'll come back. It'll get reintroduced because we're living in a world where we have to communicate with others. The critical question, Peter, and uh, look, I get the sense you still think even this lockdown or certainly some of the restrictions and border, border, uh, border closures across the country now are an overreaction. When is the point at which we can kiss goodbye to all lockdowns and internal border closures? Are we almost there now or do you think we need to wait till after winter and getting perhaps 50% of the population properly vaccinated? Well, I think in reality it will be after winter because of the viewpoint that most people have. We seem to have actually more fear now than a year ago, even despite our success. And I might say most of the deaths last year in, in um, Melbourne were people in nursing homes. And I think we have got 90% plus vaccination in those situations. So that will make the deaths a lot less. But realistically, I think it's before winter. Once we actually have 70 or 80 per cent of the adults vaccinated, which is, you know, I think by October, November, and most of those with two vaccines, then I think we should actually not have internal border closures anymore and may even be more lenient with maybe, you know, low risk countries. Because at that stage, if people have decided they don't want to get vaccinated and that's their choice, I don't think we should restrict the lives of everybody because somebody else has made a choice they don't want to get vaccinated yet. So there'll come a time, Indeed. and I think it's the 70 or 80 percent vaccination rate, when, well, we're going to have to accept the fact that this will spread. And then our focus for restrictions should be, well, how many deaths we have, how much hospital admission is there, and how much of that is in unvaccinated people? Because that, to me, is the ultimate criteria and what we'll have to move to towards the end of the year. Right. 